I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize. Through an international level of pressure. Yo, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Benny. So brand new polling out this week from a very respected and prestigious group called the McLaughlin Group, McLaughlin Associates, say that Donald Trump could win in an electoral landslide in 2024 based on all available indicators and that Joe Biden is trailing in swing states, battleground states, 49 to 41. That's by 10 points. Also notable in this poll is that there has been a 10% flip from Joe Biden to Donald Trump. Now in recent polling, not likely to improve, by the way, as the economy continues to crater, as the Ukraine war continues to go completely south, and as people begin to see the results of Joe Biden's policies. And so you have total and complete panic time here. This is looking a lot like 2016, where a bunch of people who voted for Barack Obama and then voted for Donald Trump because they didn't like what they were being served under Barack Obama. So what does that mean? Time to bring back COVID. Yeah, baby. Let's go. Old faithful Jill Biden has COVID. That's right. She's the first to go. First lady Jill Biden test positive for COVID-19. This was announced with great aplomb this morning. Oh, yeah. First lady Jill Biden is tested positive for COVID-19. COVID's back, baby. COVID's back. Everyone be careful. And then if you were to tune in to The View, and if you care about your eyeballs, I hope that you don't do that. But if you were to click on The View and accidentally see it, you would have been met this morning with this little clip. Um, as you can see, Whoopi is not here. She has COVID. Oh. Yes, it's back. It's back. Oh, it's back. But she's on the men. She's on the tail end, and she'll probably be back this week. But sorry, she's not here. For those of you who are looking forward to seeing her. It's back remember this and you know this like that nobody really cares about Joe Biden news and nobody really cares about the view in normal America but there is a group of raging hypochondriac Karens that care deeply about both those things Dr. Joe Biden and the view and these are the people that they're trying to affect these are the people that they want to rage and push for more mail-in voting to scare the literal hell out of people so that they mail in their ballots so that they demand drop box, drop boxes at every single street corner. Oh yeah, baby, this is the plan. And there was one man who called this months ago, actually. Alex Jones straight up said that a whistleblower was telling him from inside of TSA, which uh, TSA is actually kind of secretly based. I mean, honestly, we go through, we travel through TSA. I meet a lot of incredible people who work at TSA. But he had a whistleblower say, no, 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 you don't understand. They're going to bring back COVID. Get ready. Starting in September, it's all coming back. The masks, the lockdowns, the destruction of your property, the destruction of your civil rights. It's all coming back. And now you're starting to see these little these little sprinkles. It's September 5th today. We'll get a load of this. Here's an amazing thing that we haven't seen in an age. Joe Biden was at the White House and he was wearing a mask today. Well, what's that about? Nobody else in the room's wearing a mask. Why is Joe Biden wearing a mask? So you all remember how well Biden masking went last time. Expect more of this. Here's Biden during Christmas in a mandatory masks required setting, of course, with his mask off. You might recall this one. One of my favorites, Joe Biden coughing into his hand before going and shaking the hands of a bunch of people at the height of COVID. (laughs) By coughing, wet coughing his hand and then running down. Immediately shake the hands of people. Freak. I bless you all. May Joe God Biden. protect your troops and thanks for your patience. <laughs> Running down to get Joe Biden wears no mask, but everyone around him is going to wear a mask. Yeah, and by the way, the Thank children you. have to wear the mask. Here's Joe Biden greeting masks. Joe Biden doesn't have to wear the mask. It's the children who wear the mask. See that? Yeah, I'd really go off the same okay. weekend. Run away, Sonny. Run away as fast as you can. Otherwise, you'll get the old corn pop treatment. Okay? All right. So Joe Biden is a massive fraud. Cringe Jean Pierre was asked about it. She had this to say. Joe Biden's going to start masking again. Oh, my God. It's all happening literally right on time. 
Biden tested negative last night for COVID-19 and tested negative again today. He's not experiencing any symptoms. As far as the steps he is taking, since the president was with the first lady yesterday, he will be masking while indoors and around people in alignment with CDC guidance. And he, as, as has been the practice in the past, the president will remove his mask when sufficiently distanced from mm. others indoors and while outside as well. Oh, man. Well, this, of course, has the dual effect of Joe Biden being incapable of speaking and people being incapable of seeing his face. And so I suppose there are some benefits to that. Maybe this is why Joe Biden was soaking up all the beach sun that he could in the months that he wouldn't go to East Palestine, Ohio. Joe Biden recently said that he's been too busy to go to East Palestine. Of course, Joe Biden has spent 40 percent of his presidency on vacation. Joe Biden will officially be wearing a mask again. Alex Jones was right. They're bringing back masks. So what exactly did Alex Jones say? It's worth letting you listen to the man himself. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a call yesterday. An individual was in town. And they wanted to meet with me that I know well. And they are a high level manager in the TSA. And I went and met with them and had a cup of coffee with them. And they said, you got to warn people. Tuesday, we got called in, the managers, and told that by the middle of September, that the new policy is being written, that this is done. They were told this is happening. This is not hypothetical. You will all have to wear masks again and so will airport employees. Then by the middle of October, they are going to say that everyone flying has to wear a mask. And in the meetings, people began to ask them, well, I mean, why is this happening? They said, well, because of the new variant in Canada and because of the WHO, they may you know, declare this, but regardless... We've been told this is going to happen. So, yeah, what happens when all of the evil people in society all get on the same page and start saying the same thing and doing the same thing? Joe Biden, Jill Biden, the women of The View, the witches of The View, and cringe Jean-Pierre? Oh, baby, you know this is a conspiracy. We're all back. But are people going to buy it this time? Well, luckily for us, we don't have to guess. We now have the data. And even Anthony Fauci was absolutely BTFO'd on CNN of all places. Anthony Fauci branded a, fraud, branded a fraud and a liar for admitting there is a lack of evidence showing that mask mandates stopped the COVID pandemic. Fauci slammed for admitting there's a lack of evidence that is very weak in favor of masking. Study by the UK found there is just no evidence that, they ma that masks make any difference. Fauci backtracked and said the data is less strong when presented with the evidence by Michael Smirkonich, who looked like this during the interview, realizing that Dr. Fauci was a gigantic liar. Michael Smirkonich, of course, not a Republican, not a conservative at all, uh, is, a CNN, is a CNN hack and has been for a very long time. But even he was shocked at Anthony Fauci's blatant and obvious lies. Ladies and gentlemen, a clip that we just love. We love. Check this out. Dr. Fauci having a... Uh, very sharp thing shoved right in his rear end called facts. I would hope that if, in fact, we get to the point where the volume of cases is such and organizations like the CDC recommend, CDC doesn't mandate anything. I mean, recommends that people wear masks. I would hope that they abide by the recommendation and take into account the risk to themselves and to their families. And again, we're not talking There's about forcing anybody to do anything. Totally understood. There is a perception out there by many, how many I don't know, that they don't work and that the data concludes that they didn't work in the first go round. Respond to that on masks. Yeah, well, that's not so. I mean, when you're talking about at the population level, that the data are less strong than knowing that if you look on a situation as an individual protecting themselves or protecting them from spreading it, there's no doubt that masks work. Different studies give different percentages of advantage of wearing it, but there's no doubt that the weight of the studies, and there have been many studies, indicate the benefit of wearing masks. 
I'm going to refer to one of them. You've heard about it before. I heard about it from a number of radio callers. Uh, Brett Stevens in The Times talked about Cochrane. Put that on the screen. The most rigorous and comprehensive analysis of scientific studies conducted on the efficacy of masks for reducing the spread of respiratory illness, including COVID-19, was published last month. Its conclusions, said Tom Jefferson, the Oxford epidemiologist who is the lead author, were unambiguous. There is just no evidence that they, masks, make any difference he told the journalist Mayan Damasi, full stop. But wait, hold on, what about the N95 masks as opposed to the lower quality? Surgical or cloth masks makes no difference, none of it, he said. Well, what about the studies that initially persuaded policymakers to impose mask mandates? They were convinced by non-randomized studies, flawed observational studies. How do we get beyond that finding of that particular review? Yeah, but there are other studies, Michael, that show at an individual level for individual. When you're talking about the effect on the epidemic or the pandemic as a whole, the data are less strong. But when you talk about as an individual basis of someone protecting themselves or protecting themselves from spreading it to others, there's no doubt that there are many studies that show that there is an advantage. When you took at the broad population level, like the Cochrane study, the data are less firm with regard to the effect on the overall pandemic. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about an individual's effect on their own safety. That's a bit different than the broad population level.